up, Internet? What's up? We're doing a new new segment. This one's called Babby Talk. Babby's first fusion. fusion. Jazz fusion. That's what we're doing. We're going to be covering uh, some entry-level points for those who are unfamiliar with uh, styles of music. And for this particular viewing session, we're going to be going over some jazz fusion records. We think that if you don't know jazz fusion, Everything's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how we're going to do this. Are you are you prepared? I am. So here's what we're going to do. We both picked out three of our favorite yeah. jazz fusion albums. And ones that we'd like to recommend to you if you'd also like to get into jazz fusion. And we're going to do this in levels of ease, <laughs> ear accessibility. Level one, we have our albums. Right. Level two, more advanced, we have our albums. And then, getting pretty extreme, level four. four. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Now, wait, I'm sorry. Oh, before before we start... Ready to jump in. Before we start, Jazz Fusion. Oh, okay. Okay. Four zeros. Okay. The amalgamation uh, between jazz, the root of it, mixed with elements of funk... R&B, and a little rock. Rock and roll. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's how we're going to do that. I mean, yeah, that's jazz, what jazz fusion is. It's the marriage of jazz and rock and some other things here and there. Pro, a little bit of rock, too. Oh, yeah, There's a lot yeah, of yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, that's how we do. So. You ready? You first. <sighs> okay, we're doing this. Wait, wait, we have to have a coin toss. We have to have <laughs> a coin we? toss. Do you have a fucking coin toss? No, no, great. No, you go first. <laughs> Miles Davis. In a silent way. And I'm sure, like, if you're watching this and you are a Miles fan, you're going to be like, yeah, you're not going to be a bitches for It's not going to be a bitches for And because I think, I personally, I, and it seems to be that Brian agrees with me, I think that In a Silent Way, for me, for my dollar, In a Silent Way has a lot, especially for those who are inexperienced with jazz and jazz fusion, like, I mean, Vicious Room might be, definitely be a little tough. And uh, there are a lot of instruments, uh, elements of rock and space rock and prog rock throughout In a Silent Way that I think makes it super accessible and fantastic because of it. I can't get enough of that fucking record. The guitar work is out of this world. The drumming's so fucking good. And, like, Miles, is, as, like, a band leader, is just consistently on point throughout his discography. And this is not an exception at all. This is a fab record. I fucking... Can't say enough about it in this island, man. I love that album. Cool, cool, yes. Yeah. Before we go to mine, Miles Davis, uh, cool jazz, free cool jazz. jazz. Free Where jazz, do, what do you cool find jazz. on this? What do you find on this? This is honestly mostly, like, obviously fusion yeah. jazz. But I mean, what's so ridiculous about Miles Davis as a musician is he has gone through, he's pretty much run the gamut of jazz entirely he just does all of jazz because he wants to you know and so uh there were a couple records he did that were fusiony and this was one of them and uh the, uh the the fusion that he did on this record is really airy it's really spacious and it's very atmospheric so, which is what i found so intensely appealing and unique in his catalog and uh, jazz fusion as a whole you know now what i'm saying what's your level one album okay Vital Information, and the album is Live, A Great Night. Who the fuck is Vital Information? One Great Night, excuse me. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's okay. Who's Vital Information? Vital Information, uh, they are a, a jazz band led by drummer and band leader Steve Smith, who, not sure if you know this, played for a long time in the band Journey. No way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. And all your favorite songs. Don't, Don't stop, stop believing. believing. Open arms. <laughs> Separate ways. All Steve Smith. And people who first, you know, heard Journey, they say, well, he's just a rock drummer. He's not. He's a jazz drummer first. And during that same, you know, period of time, he formed Vile Information. They've had a ton of different lineup changes, but a live one great night, a live concert, an hour long concert. Filmed in 2007, I think officially released in 2012. And what you have here, a lot of the tracks are from an album called Vitalization, but then they, they mix in some older songs also. The whole entire performance is has a lot of stuff. It's uh, elements of jazz fusion with 
a lot of traditional jazz and some smooth funk oriented jazz also. It's very, very syncopated, very rhythmic, and I think very easy to get into. And it, when it grooves, it grooves hard. <laughs> so it's really fun. Awesome. Uh, are you ready for level two? Level two. Oh god. Okay. It's it's not that hard yet. It's still pretty easy. Okay. Level two. My level two album. Pat Metheny Group with the subtitled record Pat Metheny Group. And this is a if you don't know who Pat Metheny is, you fucking what the fuck are you what the fucking what are you? And like Pat Metheny is a jazz fusion guitarist, virtuoso, genius if I may go that far. He is he's done a lot of really like really cool edgy fusion stuff while under the name Pat Metheny as well. Got a lot of really interesting records, uh, Bright Size Life being one of his most famous. I mean they have there's a bunch of albums he's, he has a large discography. Um, he is he's he's quite good. And in in his earlier times, his first like handful of records, he did some pretty awesome stuff. I mean, he's unfortunately, uh, suffice to say, I think he's kind of, I saw a description of him uh, describing him as, a description describing him as a, um, the soccer mom of jazz, which is unfortunately what I think he's become in recent years. I think he's been pretty uninteresting in his later albums. But I mean, I digress. His early stuff's really great and I can't dismiss that at all. Point being, Pat Metheny Group's record. I mean, he worked with he worked with Jacko, you know? Yeah. He worked with Jacko a lot. There's a song on Pat Metheny Group called Jacko, you know? And like, uh, which I think was made after he died, I think. I think so, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic fusion. He's a really, really great guitarist, and there's some really intense, uh, intensely really melodic, very, it's still very light, but really awesome fusion, no less, on this album. That's what you'll find here. Nice. That's my cool Metheny Group. Well, going along with uh, with Jaco Pistorius is the Weather Report yeah. with Heavy Weather. Uh, Heavy Weather released in 1977. Uh, jazz critics pretty much said that Heavy Weather re kickstarted jazz fusion because um, after the Miles Davis, you know, early 70s or so, where that really started to come in, the mid 70s it kind of just took a bit of a rest and a bit of a back seat, sure. and it got a little bit stale. And jazz in general, people say got a little bit stale around that time. Well, 1977 saw Heavy Weather by The Weather Report. Um, I think their second album, either way, definitely not their first, they've been around. And they really kicked the fusion into high gear. It's a very, very fusion-oriented, some prog, some funk, but mainly, if you want to hear the actual sound of jazz fusion, look no further, because Jacob Pistorius, Alex Acuna, other guys who are amazing, whose names I can't pronounce, they are all a part of this one band, and they work together, and it's seamless. It's absolutely fantastic. Arrangements are nuts. And a lot of... Interesting. The use of analog synthesizers. Really? Yeah, a uh, how, lot. How did it jive? Badly? <laughs> no, very well. Oh, okay, that's good. But it's not something you'd, you'd hear on a record that's considered jazz. So it's just another element to bring into fusion. Mm -hmm. How was how um, Jocko's point? Jocko's on point. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yo, Jocko's on point. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. The bassist. Of course, if that wasn't said, of course. Jocko's stories. And how were the, what were some other standout elements of the, how was the guitar, how was the, Else. You know, everything really jobs. I think, actually, I think one of the biggest strong points on the album are the keys. And uh, you have everything. The use of synth is really brave. And a lot of experimentation with analog synthesizers. Um, with some, you know, Rhodes electric piano, maybe a little bit of organ, but it's just a really interesting aesthetic to bring into jazz, which I thought so. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. Level four. I'm scared about level four, man. You ready? Yeah. I guess level four. Level four, guys. Okay. So you were talking brave. Man. Soft machine. Holy shit. Now that's not, okay, people might, as soon as I said soft machine, I know some of you guys are like, what? But like, soft machine, if I may. Um, well, well, I traditionally think of Just Fusion as, um, Jazz wearing an overcoat that says rock on it. I think that uh, 
Soft Machine is is a, a rock band wearing a jazz overcoat, cloaked in that sort of way. It's a, a rock band in a jazz context, as in, instead of vice versa. And uh, ja uh, briefly, Soft Machine um, drummer Robert Wyatt, fantastic musician, going on to do solo stuff that's been praised by critics. Uh, in the Canterbury scene of England, late sixties, early seventies, progressive, weird, you know, weirdo stuff. But um, with their record third, Soft Machine's third, man, holy shit, dude, it's fucking. It, there, there's parts in it you forget they're a rock band at all, and you're just like, man, this is nuts jazz. It's just like smooth fucking. Oh god, you know. And it's a, it's a, it's a four track album, all of them being over fifteen minutes. Uh, two, two of my favorite songs on it uh, being Slightly All the Time and Moon in June. Oh man, those are such, oh god, it feels so good, you know? And like, I mean, that's how I feel about Soft Machine. It feels really nice. Yeah, really, really layered, really, really composed, and just brilliantly, geniusly composed. It's some fantastic stuff. And if, it's, it's not traditionally jazz fusion, but it's it's basically jazz fusion. That's what you get if you like throw on third by Soft Machine. Really quick, sure. if jazz fans are watching this mm -hmm. and they hear you talk about Soft Machine, sure. as people know a prog band, let's just say, sure, yeah, prog band, sure. and people say, oh, Greg, you, you can't say that. I have to talk to my wife and she's going to give me pie. But I don't, <laughs> the Soft Machine, they're not jazz at all. What do you say to those people? Do you know what jazz is? <laughs> Jazz is like known traditionally for breaking so many barriers, and I mean, I know there, I know a lot of jazz people who will say, "But this isn't jazz." Shut up, shut up, jazz. You can, oh my god, you can do. I can, I can consider Naked City fucking jazz if I want to, and I, I would be founded in saying that. You know, I can. Whoa. I won't fucking. Uh, I mean, I'll probably first consider them a grindcore band, but still, I mean, like, really, I mean, jazz. It, you, it's it's fucking jazz. I mean, put it on the jazz instrumentation through the whole thing. Some of the saxophone licks you you'd find in like cool stuff. Man, come on, like eat my ass. You know what I mean? Like fuck you. It's fucking jazz. Get over yourself, with jazz purists. In the words of jazz, uh, John Zorn, jazz snobs eat shit. What's your level four album? Level four, Babby's first fusion, Mahavishnu Orchestra. <laughs> Birds of Fire Yo. is the album. This fucking band. <laughs> John McLaughlin fronted. John McLaughlin. Oh, yeah. Billy Cobham. Oh, God. Yes. Jan Hammer. I know the name. I can't. Yeah. Jan Hammer, tell me. Well, he later orchestrated a lot of um, 80s instrumental synth pop ish. Oh, really? He did a lot of soundtracks. Beverly Hills Copy was on it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Cool, right on. So, so we're talking like jazz legends. Uh -huh. we're, if we're talking John McLaughlin and Billy Billy Cobham, like legends, mm -hmm. uncomfortable, <laughs> uncomfortable for us three. <laughs> okay. So tell me about Birds of Fire. I will. This is uh, a breakout album for them, and what you have here with this sort of group is you, you have mostly traditional rock instruments, electric guitar. Uh, keyboards. One guy plays electric violin. That might be your your one outlier there. But with that sort of thing, these guys made rock jazz. They made fusion with this sort of thing. Here's the thing. This is why it's level four. It's very free. This is a very free record. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Can you... <laughs> Can you define free jazz? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well you, you are like you're brilliant with eras. So when was Coleman? Just I'm bad with eras. I'm sorry. Born at Coleman. When? When? Was oh it? God, I don't know. Thirties, forties, fifties. I remember um, the free jazz concept came around like late thirties. Thirties. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, somewhere at some point in jazz's history, Ornette Coleman, which is pretty much. The, the, the godfather of free jazz. He um, released some of his best records and uh, material. Uh, notably, The Shape of Jazz to Come, which I, God, I can't get enough of that record. is so good. And uh, he and a lot of, you know, other, Miles Davis too, you know, I mean, other fantastic players do free jazz. Uh, Albert Eiler, you know, whatever. Um, but free jazz, is it's, it's the idea that 
and I'm gonna, oh man, jazz fans are watching this, they're gonna be like, Greg, fuck you, you're not even right. <laughs> But to, to my understanding, to like uh, the, the amount of free jazz I've listened to, it is uh, jazz, also on this one, jazz that is performed in a context that is rhythmically and tonally free. So, um, you don't, yeah. a lot of the rhythms can be really out there and not necessarily played together. It can be very, um, the parts can be very uh, disparate, you know, it, it won't really sound completely in line with each other because they wanted their music to be Free. You know, they wanted to they wanted to break out of boxes and boundaries placed by, you know, the man. And they they don't want to like play like the man says. And I mean that's a genius concept, you know, to actually break down the fundamentals of music in that way. Which is why some some of Coleman's records are some of the most important in jazz, I think. <sighs> cool. Well, what you have is just that on Birds of Fire by Mahavishnu Orchestra. You have a lot of rhythmically out there parts, and you have a lot of uh, tonally out there parts, and things, elements that seem disjointed, but they're really not. And my whole thing is, if you sit down and you don't really know jazz fusion very well, or free jazz very well, and you sit down, listen to Birds of Fire, the entire thing, all at once, you're probably going to go insane. Don't do that. That's why I listened to the first two, right? This is level four. I listened to the first two. Can't you count, idiot? Probably can't. You idiots. Yeah. Look at you. You listen to stupid idiot. One, two, four. You idiot. That's how it goes. How do you like uh, Mahak Rishim's other record? It's like the big one. I can't remember the new one right now. This kind of was like the big... There was another one that's huge now. It totally was. Another Mahak Rishim record. Wait! I'm going to look on my phone. Well... Check that one out. It's Birds of Fire, Mod Vista Orchestra. All, yeah, jazz fusion with a lot of free jazz influence. Even some 12 tone stuff. Inner Mountain Flame! What's that? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on. I know that one. <laughs> and those are my picks for Babby's First Fusion on, ba on Babby Talk. Babby Talk. Babby's First Fusion. You have a good night. Drink some tea tonight. Have a good time. <laughs>